Now you have a view communicated in a lot of your research, some of your most famous pieces, that people in the West, or at least some people in the West, they are what you call weird, and that's an acronym for Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. And we should not draw general conclusions about humanity on the basis of weird people. And most of us here, possibly all of us, wear deeply weird. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so uh, in around 2006, I arrived at the University of British Columbia, and I had been in an anthropology department at Emory University, and I met a couple of cultural psychologists, and we got to talking over lunch, and we realized in each of the areas for which we were experts on that Westerners were unusual compared to all the other populations that had been studied. So we thought this was interesting, and we began to pile, compile all the available data we could find where Western populations were compared against some larger global sample. And what we found in not every, but a large number of important domains in the psychological and behavioral sciences, that Westerners were at the extreme end of the distribution. So, uh, I mean, this made us worry, and I think it ought to make lots of people worry, about the typical textbook conclusions that you would find in psychology textbooks. And much of behavioral economics, at least at the time, was based on running ex uh, experiments on undergrads. And it's so actually mostly American uh, undergrads that are studied. So, for instance, peoples are better at cooperating if they have had many generations in a market economy or needing to do a lot of cooperative hunting. That would be an example of how we're weird. So we have some positive sum mentality that maybe is relatively rare in the world. Right. Uh, and so this is, uh, so the case that I've made for this particular is that, uh, you know, in order to make markets work, we need particular social norms for how to deal with strangers and interact with them in a mutually beneficial way. And in the smallest scale human societies, you have, you have social norms for dealing with different kinds of relatives and, and people you have a certain kind of relationship with. But this kind of general purpose norm for how you're going to treat, treat anybody is a product of cultural evolution. And much of what I think we measure in, beha in behavioral economics, experimental economics, is actually just a measurement of a culturally local social norm.